Thanks for joining us today. Uh, so today's class, what we're going to be talking about are, first of all, my name is Brian, sorry for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I think many of you have come in before, but I'm kind of the main uh, instructor here at Mac Fusion, teach most of the classes, so if you schedule a, a lesson, you're going to usually see my face. Um, so what we want to talk about today are just some, some really practical, uh, basic tips for how to keep your devices running smoothly, uh, whether that's you know an iPad, an iPhone, or a Mac. Um, you know, and, and the nice thing is, you know, with those devices, with Apple devices in general, that you don't have to do a whole lot in terms of maintenance, which is part of the reason that we get those uh, that brand of devices, right? So we don't have to worry about it. But uh, I also want to open it up and kind of just talk about some best practices in general, just since there's not a whole lot of maintenance you actually have to do. Um, we'll talk about some just general things to, to look at and, and to you know, kind of help your device uh, run smoothly and last as long as it should. Uh, so just right at the top, I wanted to mention uh, we do offer private lessons. Um, again, many of you I think already know, but we do what are called Tech Bytes. That's our cute little name for the half hour lessons that we do. Uh, they're just $29 for 30 minutes in the store. And if you want us to come to your house, if you do live in the area, we can definitely do that. And that is uh, $69 for a half hour session. And you know, uh, a lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, how much can you really talk about in a half hour? The answer is actually for quite a bit. So we really, it's a concentrated you know, session. Uh, that, that we do, so definitely can, can pack a lot into that time. So I just want to mention that at the top, especially because you know we're going to try to get through a fair amount of material today. So if you guys are feeling like, hey, oh, you know, I'm not really clear on some of this stuff, and I want to come back and get some clarification on it, and maybe even see how this actually relates just to me specifically, that's really where we have those those tech bites, and that's exactly what they're for. Um, okay, so. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about uh, some things you can do with uh, iOS, things you can do to help maintain iOS. Uh, when we say iOS, that really just refers to the operating system that runs on the iPad, iPhone, and the iPod Touch as well, although you, know, you don't see those as much, so mainly iPad, iPhone. Um, iOS is, is the software that's used on those devices. And the great thing is about iOS, one of the great things about it, is the fact that it's so streamlined and so kind of uh, cleanly designed that you really don't have to do a whole lot to keep it running smoothly. Um, and really when it comes to keeping your devices you know, in tip-top shape, one of the best things you can do as a user is manage your storage. Okay. Um, so when we say storage, we're talking in this case mainly about the storage that's actually on the device, the storage that you actually have. So if you have a, a 16 gigabyte iPhone or a you know 128 gig iPad or something, that's the actual internal storage. So that's the one we're talking about in this case because that's really the one that's going to govern how well that device can run. You know, you want to have a decent amount of free space. Um, so. We're going to be looking at a little more in detail in an actual demo uh, here in a minute, but um, let's go through a few things that you can actually do now to help you manage your storage. One of the great things in recent years that's come about is the fact that we can use iCloud as a way to almost extend the, the internal storage of our devices, right? So I like to compare iCloud to kind of like having an external hard drive attached to your device but it just so happens that, that that hard drive is you know, probably hundreds, if not thousands of miles away. So it's a great way to, to help you kind of ease the pressure off of the device's built-in storage. Um, and again, we'll look, we'll look a, a little more in detail on that in a moment when we actually do the demo here. Another thing that you can use to help you know, free up storage on your device is something called the iCloud Photo Library. How many of you are using the iCloud Photo Library? A couple, a few people? Okay, cool. So one of the great, you know, what we've seen is usually the source of fullness on an iPhone or an iPad is going to come from 
pictures and videos. That's typically the biggest thing that you're going to have on your device is your photo library. So the great thing, again, about iCloud is that it can kind of help you know, ease the burden of that storage off onto the iCloud storage instead of having to keep all of it on device at all times. So the great thing about the iCloud photo library is that it has this feature called optimized storage. Okay? And optimized storage can actually automatically shrink the size of the photo library that's on your device at any given time without you losing any access to any of your photos. You can still go onto your photos app and access every single photo you've ever taken, but some of those photos might not actually be taking up space on your device until you actually click on it and it, and it will download. So, uh, so we can look at that as well in the demo here. Um, one thing about the iCloud Photo Library 2 that, that's really great is, you know, you guys might be familiar with some of the other offerings from different companies. Um, other, some of the other companies, we won't mention any names, will like shrink your photos, they might compress your photos. The iCloud Photo Library never does that, okay? It's always the full quality original. So if you guys take raw photos, or if you, you know, like to take really high res photos, it's always going to preserve that original resolution, so you never have to worry about it getting compressed. Okay, so let's do a little demo here, and let's actually take a look at some of this stuff and where you would find it on your devices. So I'm going to switch over here to my iPad. There it is. I'm make that a little bigger for you guys. Stretch that out. There we go. That should be pretty visible. Okay, cool. Got this great new app that lets me mirror my my device is screen, so it's pretty sweet. Um, so this is my iPad, and one of the first places I always like to start when it comes to managing the storage is in the Settings app. So you just pop open your Settings app, and in Settings, you can go to General, which is actually what I'm already in here, and then in General, you're typically going to have a Storage and iCloud Usage section right there. So when we're looking at this, what you want to keep in mind, again, is that we really have two types of storage that we're, that we're dealing with, right? We're dealing with the internal storage, the actual storage built into this iPad, and then the iCloud storage, which again is the iCloud server, right? That's not my actual device's storage, but they are linked in various ways. You know, so one thing that's great is if you go into the Manage Storage right here under the Storage section, Okay, so this is again my internal storage. First of all, I see really clearly, okay, I'm using about nine and a half gigabytes and I have about you know, three gigabytes available. So I'm actually not really in a place where I need to worry about cleaning up my storage, uh, which is nice, but this is also not my personal device, you know, so it's not holding a lot of pictures or videos or anything like that. Um, and that's another thing I will say is, you know, take all of this stuff with a grain of salt because if you guys don't, need to clean up your device, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, typically, the iPad and the iPhone can actually get pretty full before they really start taking a dip performance-wise. Uh, I would say computers maybe are a little less resistant to it, but iPads and iPhones, you know, you could probably fill them up to the point where you have maybe only a gigabyte free, and you're probably going to be fine. You know, it's once you dip below a gigabyte that you really start having some of those issues and you might start seeing some weird stuff happening. You know, maybe contacts don't sync or maybe pictures don't load. Just weird things can happen when you start getting really low storage. So that's always the first place I like to check if people are reporting those kinds of issues. Um, but from this screen, you know, one of the nice things you can do in here is you can actually manage the storage to a certain extent right here in the settings. So, for example, if I am going through this list here and I notice that you know, maybe I have an app on here that I no longer use, I can actually just hit delete app right there and delete it from right here from settings. And I don't actually have to go back to the home screen, find that app, and then delete it. Uh, but, of course, you could, and if you guys aren't familiar with that process, just to remind you or, or uh, show you what that looks like, if you want to remove an app, all you have to do is just press and hold on any of the apps, and you get that little, little wiggle, right? You get the price in that. So you just click the little X, and you can remove that app. 
Um, one of the cool things now, recent thing that they added is that you can actually delete more apps than you used to be able to. Um, you used to not be able to delete any of the sort of default apps that came with the device. Now you can actually delete those. Um, although I find most of them to be useful, so I usually don't end up doing that, but nice that they gave you that option you know, to do that. Um, so let me go back into my storage section here. Um, another one that you'll see a fair amount as far as something that's going to take up a lot of storage are actually text messages. Um, so usually if you pop this open, especially on an iPhone, you're going to see messages being somewhere probably near the top. And the nice thing is you can definitely manage that as well. When it comes to messages, you can actually go into the messages app and if you have any existing uh, conversations here, you can just go ahead and remove those conversations directly from messages. So this is just a little demo thing I was doing for a class. So I can just right swipe. So I'm just actually with that, what you're doing is you're just swiping right to left. And that shows the little uh, delete button, right? And you just hit delete, OK? And that just deletes that message right there. <laughs> Again, that was a demo thing I was doing, showing people how to send animated GIFs. Um, so this is a good one to, to manage storage, deleting old conversations, uh, because those can actually take up a fair amount of, of your storage. Uh, let's also take a look at some of the, the iCloud settings you can use to help ease the pressure off of your internal storage. So now, you guys may know this already, but with the newer software versions, uh, iOS 10, uh, they are actually grouping everything related to iCloud under just this one top heading. So it should be at the very top of your settings list. You'll see like your name, usually first and last name. And if you go in there, that will show you everything related to your Apple ID, which includes your iCloud settings. So you notice that I have my iCloud right here. Okay, so there are my iCloud settings. And that one that I was talking about earlier, the iCloud Photo Library, is found right in here in Photos. So if I open that up, you notice that I have my iCloud Photo Library turned on, okay, and I have it set to optimize iPad storage. So again, what that means is that if my storage dips too low, what it's going to do is it's going to shrink the size of the library that's actually stored on my iPad. But the beauty of it is I will never lose access to any of my photos. I can still absolutely go into the Photos app, pop it open, and see every single photo I've ever taken. Most of these I have not taken because they're Apple demo photos, <laughs> so don't be jealous. But if I click on any of these photos, in some cases what you're going to see is like a little circle down in the lower right corner. I don't know if you saw that kind of fill in, if you, if you guys just keep an eye on that lower right corner there. You'll probably see it, see that little circle that just filled in? That was actually it downloading from iCloud. Okay, so until I opened it, it wasn't actually taking up any storage on my device. You know, so that's, that's part of the power of, of the iCloud Photo Library. It's one of the ways that it can help you, um, you know, again, ease the pressure off the iCloud, or off of the iPads or iPhone storage. Cool. Let me switch back over here to my computer. And like I said, um, today I want to make this about more than just cleanup because there's not too much to do when it comes to cleanup. So one of the things I wanted to talk about as far as the best practice is backup. Okay, you guys have to back up your devices. Uh, most of us even if you don't think that you have anything important on your device, usually if it goes missing or you lose it or something like that, you'll end up finding out, oh, actually, there are some things that I'm kind of sad I lost, you know, whether that's photos or text messages or voicemails. So it's a really good idea to back up your iPhones and iPads. And the good news is it could not be easier when it comes to uh, backup. Uh, with iOS devices, because we can also use iCloud for that as well. Um, the great thing about iCloud backup is when you turn it on, it will back up your device anytime it's plugged into power and connected to Wi-Fi. So typically, for a lot of devices, that's probably every night. You know, especially iPhones, you're going to charge it. And so when you're sleeping, 
your iPhone or your iPad is just backing up to iCloud, and then the next morning you wake up, it's all backed up. You don't even have to think about it. You know, I could I could almost guarantee you that if I go into my settings on my iPhone right now and I look at my backup, it's going to say last backup, and it's going to give me a time sometime in the middle of the night when I was fast asleep. So, so that's definitely something that I would recommend. Um, another way that you can back up, if you don't want to back up to iCloud for some reason, is you can also back up to iTunes. So if you have a computer at home running iTunes, um, which a lot of us do, uh, you can actually just plug that in to your computer and run a backup to iTunes. And it'll actually store all that same data that it would store in iCloud, it'll store it all on your computer as well, if you need to, you know, get it transferred to a new device, if you have to get it repaired, anything like that, super easy to just restore from the iTunes backup and it all just kind of comes back. Um, and as far as enabling that, if you guys aren't sure about how to, how to go about doing that, let me just uh, connect back up here and show that to you. Get my iPad, pair it back up. Someone just going to sit there. All right. So let me just show you that you're right there. Um, so really all there is to it when it comes to iCloud backup is turning it on. So again, I'm just going to go into my settings. And I'm actually already in the iCloud settings. But again, that's under the Apple ID. You go to iCloud. And then iCloud backup right here. And you see how it's turned on? Look at that. 345. Right before the class, my, I was plugging it in, giving it a charge, and it backed up to iCloud, right? Didn't even have to think about it. So, so this is a really, really good way to back up, um, you know, because of, for one thing, it's completeness, and for another thing, how automatic it is. Cool? Awesome. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Yes? What about external hard drives? Yeah, uh, so... As far as external hard drives, usually you're going to use those to back up um, a Mac, uh, which we will talk about here in a moment when we, when we start talking about the Mac. Um, you're usually not going to use an external hard drive to back up like an iPhone or an iPad um, because there's no way to you know, connect it to, to those devices. Um, but yes, it's definitely useful in the case of backing up a Mac um, via Time Machine, which, which we'll be discussing here in a moment. So yeah. Uh, anybody else questions at this point? No? Okay, cool. So we'll keep on moving through it here. Let me get my presentation back up. Okay, so let's now talk about the Mac. So Mac OS. Uh, again, not a ton of stuff you have to do as a user to really clean up your computer, your Mac. Um, and again, if you're not in a place where you're running low on storage or you're not really noticing any slowness, I wouldn't worry about it too much, you know? I think a lot of people have this sort of itching feeling that, like, I haven't done anything to clean this thing up. Isn't it, isn't it just, like, accumulating files and isn't the hard drive getting fragmented and all that stuff? No, it's not. You're, th you're thinking of PCs, okay? Don't worry about it. Uh, but I want to give you some tools, though, just to, if anything, put your mind a little more at ease and, and help you kind of see what's going on in the computer. So just like with iOS, one of the best things you can do as a user um, on Mac is to manage your storage. You know? And really, when it comes to managing storage on the Mac, because it doesn't accumulate system files and kind of jump behind the scenes, it really just comes to removing files that, that you've added to the computer that you no longer use. So videos you might have added, or um, documents that are large, or anything you have on the machine that you've added that you no longer need, that's one of the best ways to keep it running smoothly. Um, again, just like with iOS, we have a really great way to you know, see what's going on on your disk at any given time. There's a built-in uh, kind of bar graph here that will show you, and again, we'll be looking at this in a live demo here in a moment, but you've got this really nice, clear way of seeing, okay, what's on my drive, what's filling up, how full is it, you know? And with the Mac, uh, typically you don't see, again, a big performance hit until you probably get below 10, 15% of your drive's capacity being full. Um, Especially with solid state drives or flash storage, if you guys are lucky enough to have a computer that has that type of storage, 
you can really fill it up pretty full, and it should be able to, to handle that. Um, and also, just like with iOS, we have the ability to use iCloud as well on the Mac to, to help expand or, or help uh, ease the pressure off of the Mac in terms of its local storage or its uh, internal storage. Uh, we actually have some additional options with the Mac, which we'll look at, um, which are pretty cool. Uh, they have the ability now to sync um, desktop and documents folders through iCloud Drive. I don't know if you guys are using that feature or anything. They added that with uh, Mac OS Sierra. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. And also, I know it sounds like a broken record, but just like iOS, on Mac OS, we also have access to the iCloud Photo Library. So same feature, same idea. We have the ability to optimize the storage automatically and shrink the size of the library that's on your Mac. Okay, so it can actually push some of that stuff to the cloud uh, so you don't have to be storing it all in your internal hard drive. Okay. Uh, now another thing that you can do with Mac, and this is something that's kind of unique to Mac OS, uh, that you won't find on iOS, again because iOS is a little more streamlined, is uh, something called startup items or login items. Okay? And this is something we see a lot when we get computers checked in for tune-ups, is people might have a lot of things loading on startup or on login that they don't actually use anymore. You know, you might have some sort of a, a Garmin app or a Fitbit app or something that you've you know, maybe we're using, but you're no longer, but it's still loading every time you start up your computer. You know, and these are basically the little icons that you see when you're on your Mac and you see those little things up in the upper right. Those are typically the login items or the startup items, you know. So that's something you can definitely uh, control as a user, and we'll look at how to do that in, you guessed it, a demo. All right, so let's switch over here. I actually don't need to do anything now with the pairing because I'm already on my Mac. So, just mirror. There we are. There's my Mac. And so what I'm going to do here, first thing we, we can do is look at our storage. So we can go to the Apple menu, go to About This Mac, okay? And here we're going to get a lot of great helpful information about, you know, uh, our computer, how much RAM we have, all that good stuff. Uh, very helpful if you have to call technical support, call us, and we ask you a question, you can look at this. Uh, but the storage section is really where you get into uh, what we were looking at earlier as far as seeing a breakdown of what you have on your computer and uh, potentially managing that even right here from this built-in uh, storage window. So it used to be the case that all you could do was see this bar graph and you couldn't go any further. You know, it was just kind of like, here's what it is, and then it was on you to go in and find those files and figure out how to optimize it yourself. The great thing is now with Sierra, we have this manage button, okay? So the manage button lets you, kind of like on iOS, go into this other screen here. So it opens up this window, and this window is going to give you some really good ways of going in and finding those files that it's referring to in that graph, and potentially even cleaning them out right here. Um, so we'll talk about these recommendations here in a moment, but let me show you over here. See how we have these, kind of like on iOS, we have these, this list of items with little sizes over there? So generally when it comes to cleanup, you're going to want to look for stuff that says GB. Okay, because GB means gigabytes. And gigabytes are basically one gigabyte is a thousand megabytes. Okay, and a megabyte really isn't that much, but a gigabyte, that's somewhat substantial. And certainly in this case, you know, my application folder is almost 50 gigabytes, so that's pretty large. And so one thing I can do is I can go in here, I can actually just click on this item, and I can see my application folder. And the great thing is with this view here, it's sorting everything by size automatically, right? So the largest things are at the top of the list. And if I want, I can even, if I know for sure I don't need something anymore, I can just click on this little X right here, and it'll ask me, do you want to go ahead and remove this? And if I did, I can say remove. I actually don't in this case, so I'm going to hit cancel but you can do that directly from here. 
Now, let's say you see, you see something on your computer or in this list here, and you're not quite sure what it is. One thing you can do is click on this little magnifying glass, and that's actually going to open up that file wherever it exists on your computer, and then you can uh, double click and actually open that and see if that's something that you do want to keep or not. You know? So you can also use it as a way of, of locating the files as well. Uh, so let's look at this recommendation screen, because uh, this is pretty cool stuff. We have a few options here for kind of more automatic things you can do to, to help uh, optimize the storage on your Mac. Uh, like I was saying, one of the things we have the ability to do now with iCloud is not only use the iCloud photo library to optimize our photo storage, but we also have the ability to do that with our documents as well. Um, so if you were to click optimize here, that actually just pertains to the iCloud photo library. But what we can do is go in here to the system preferences, go to iCloud, okay, and this is where your iCloud settings live on the Mac. Right, so here, oops, here are my iCloud settings for my Mac. And I'm going to look in iCloud Drive. Okay, I'm going to go to Options. And look at that. I, have, I already have this checked off, actually. So that's why it's not, uh, let me show you guys this real quick. I'm just going to turn this off. Yeah, yeah. See, so the reason it was telling me over here, it was saying only it would only pertain to the photos, is because I already had it enabled. But if you guys don't have that enabled, see how now it says, oh, optimize photos, but it's also optimizing my documents, my files. So in one fell swoop, if I hit store in iCloud, I can optimize both my desktop and documents folders and my photo storage. So that's, again, unique to the Mac. We have the ability to optimize. Now, when I say optimize, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah right? I, I felt that question. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what it means, uh, kind of like with the iCloud Photo Library, what it means is that some of those files that you see on your computer, they'll still be accessible where you're used to accessing them. So if you had a file on your desktop previously, it's still going to be there on the desktop. but it's actually sometimes not really there until you open it. Okay, so just like that photo we saw previously, when I opened it, it downloaded. That's kind of how the optimization works with the files. Until you open them, they might not be on your computer's drive. But when you do open it, it downloads and it actually just downloads it back to your drive and lets you, lets you open it. So it's the same idea when it comes to the files. Uh, but again, leaves them exactly where they were previously, so you don't have to worry about, okay, and now I need to go to iCloud to find that file. It's right where you left it. Okay? It's on the desktop or it's in your documents folder, exactly where you left it. And as far as what it optimizes, um, you know, generally from what we've seen or what I've seen personally is that it tends to look at files you don't open very often or you haven't opened for a while, and those are usually the ones that kind of pushes to iCloud because it figures, okay, well, you're not really using this stuff, so let's go ahead and just leave it in iCloud and ease some of the pressure off the, off the drive. Um, we also have some other options in here. We have the, this optimized storage, which is a little bit different. This one actually pertains to iTunes, and this is, again, something we see a lot with the, uh, the tune-ups is people have like maybe some past episodes of uh, a TV show they were addicted to or, or some movies, you know, sitting in their iTunes library. Um, and those things you often just forget about, you know, because you watch it and you just kind of forget it. And the nice thing is this optimized storage feature can actually automatically remove that stuff from your iTunes library uh, if you haven't watched it or you've already watched it. Um, so that's a great, a great way to just kind of help, help ease, the, uh, ease the storage automatically, you know. And also, I empty trash automatically. I don't know if you guys are aware, but just like in real life, when you, empty, or when you put stuff in the trash on the Mac, you also have to empty the trash. Okay? So you have to actually do that one extra step to free up the space on your computer. Because if you just put it in the trash, it's still taking up space on your drive. So the nice thing is about this feature, it can actually 
after 30 days, automatically empty your trash, right? Usually you don't want to wait 30 days though, because it starts kind of smelling bad. But uh, <laughs> and then uh, reduce reduce clutter is actually just uh, linking into what we were looking at earlier. So really, all this does is it takes you into these screens over here. So that that's not an option or a thing you would just turn on in and of itself. But yeah, so so those are some nice uh, some nice tools and and things you can use to help manage the storage on the Mac. All right, back to the presentation. Here we go. And let's talk about a couple other things on the Mac. Um, the Mac is unique in that, you know, since it's a little more of a flexible operating system, you can do a little more with it. That can also open you up to um, potentially some things that, that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't happen on iOS. You know, which is generally a good thing. Generally, you want that flexibility with macOS, um, but you know, uh, you do have to kind of keep a watchful eye on certain things. And one of those things is keep an eye out for uh, malware. So I don't know if you guys have experienced malware firsthand, any of you have had it on your computer. You know, really, what we're seeing right now on the Mac, um, just to ease the fears right off the bat, is not. The kind of stuff you hear about in the news, the ransomware and the crazy stuff that tries to lock down your computer. Usually what we're seeing on the Mac right now is just software that's going to kind of produce pop-up ads or try to fool you into calling a phone number that they say is Apple, but it's definitely not. Um, so kind of harmless stuff for the most part. Uh, it's not going to necessarily lock down your computer, but it's just going to be an annoyance more or less. And one of the great things you can do, um, just you know, yourself at home, is you can scan your computer for malware. There's actually a lot of good free tools that you can use to try and pinpoint or find out if you have malware currently installed. Um, one of the best ones that we recommend, and we use this one here at the shop uh, most of the time, is this one called Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. Uh, let me just throw this up here so you guys can see the icon. Find it here. I just want to show you the icon for it. So it's right here. So it just kind of almost looks like a Batman logo or something. But uh, it's it's the company that owns it is called Malwarebytes, so it's kind of a mouthful. But the actual name of the app is Malwarebytes Anti Malware. Um, so if you, uh, I'm going to be emailing you guys kind of a handout, and it'll have a link to that. Um, so yeah, so you guys can uh, download that for free again, and that's a great tool because they're always updating the definitions or the signatures, as they call them, to be up to date and, and look for the most current uh, threats that, that we're seeing um, on the Mac. Um, so that's definitely one to one to be aware of. You know, as far as keeping your Mac running smoothly. Um, usually, though, the best thing to do when it comes to keeping yourself safe from malware is just kind of being careful about what you're clicking on in general, or just you know, not installing programs that you're not absolutely sure about, things like that. Um, honestly, if you if you just do that and and don't uh, you know click on anything that looks suspicious or you're not quite sure about, you should be fine. You know, um, that that's kind of the nice thing is we're not seeing any malware that's not actually user installed. So what that means is you actually have to run through an installation process to get that program on your computer. And oftentimes you'll see it masquerade as like Adobe Flash Player installer or something like that. So if you guys are installing any software updates or anything, try to make sure you're getting it from the source. You know, if you're downloading something that says it's a Flash Player update, make sure you're on Adobe.com when you're doing that download. You know, just basic stuff like that. You know, should keep you safe from getting malware in the first place. And again, just like with iOS, always very important to back up your computer. Okay, got to back up. Uh, again, just like iOS, we have really good tools, uh, built-in tools on the Mac. One of the best ways to back up, or really the best way to back up a Mac is via Time Machine. So Time Machine is a built-in 
uh, software already in your computer that you can pair up with an external hard drive. So if you guys have you know, an external hard drive, or if not, we sell them here. And you can get set up with one of those, and then every time you plug that into your computer, it just backs up automatically. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to hit backup. It just does it. You know? So it really takes all the burden off of you as a user. You don't even have to think about it. You just plug in the drive, and it goes right in there. And Time Machine is really good about how it backs up, too. You know, it, it's very intelligent about the way that it use, uses your space so on your drive. So, for example, if you have only changed or added a couple files since your last backup, it's only going to back up those files. So it's kind of an incremental backup system, as it's known. Um, and, and Time Machine, uh, really easy to set up. Again, in, in the handout I send you guys, there will be some links as far as you know, Apple support documentation for how to set that up if you don't already have it. Um, and again, we have the Tech Bytes. If you guys want to come in, we can definitely consult with you on how to set that up and, and if you're backing up properly and all of that. Uh, the nice thing is, too, you know, if you guys are really concerned about your backup, let's say you're working on like super sensitive documents or something like that, uh, there are also options for um, backing up to the cloud. Um, we don't actually have the ability right now on the map to back up the device fully to iCloud like we do with iOS devices, but uh, we do have other third-party services that can offer that functionality. So we actually sell uh, a service here, or we're a partner with this company, Backblaze, and we've been really happy with these guys. You know, what, what they do is they actually look at the drive or what you have on your computer, all of the data you have on your computer, and it runs automatic backups over the internet to their Backblaze servers, right? So as you're working on your files and doing stuff on your computer, it actually sends that stuff to an off-site server, which is great because if you have, you know, some sort of a physical loss, heaven forbid, at your, at your home, whether it's natural disaster or a theft, you know, these guys will have your data safe in that off-site off location. Okay, and now just wanted to also talk to you guys a little bit about some, uh, some healthy habits. Uh, just some things that you can do, you know, really practical tips, um, things to keep your devices running smoothly. Uh, honestly, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing technical. One of the best things you can do is just periodically restart your devices. You know, I mean, I know it sounds really silly, but it really is one of the best things you can do. I mean, if you notice anything that's happening on your device that seems odd, you know, seems like a glitch, try to restart, because you would be surprised how many times that can actually solve your issue. I mean, it does make us look pretty good when you bring in your device and all we have to do is click a couple buttons and it, and it starts working again. But if you can save yourself the trip, obviously that works out better for you. And so that's definitely something you guys can do. Um, you know, really simple to do with, with any device that they make. Uh, for example, iPhone and iPad, you can just hold the power button. Okay, I'm sure you guys have all seen this. Get that little slider, right? Just slide it turns off, powered on again, and it comes back on. Uh, and then on the Mac, again, very easy to do. You just go to the Apple menu right here and go to restart. Okay? So super easy uh, on any device to restart them. Uh, also, another thing is just in terms of keeping it running smoothly or, or a healthy habit, is the battery. Uh, taking care of devices with um, rechargeable batteries. So if you guys have you know, a laptop or if you have iPhone or iPad, obviously those have batteries. One of the best things you can do is to kind of run down the battery, at least partially, almost every day, and then recharge it you know, at night. Um, I would say you don't really need to worry about running down the battery completely anymore. You know, those days of kind of you know, where you have to worry about if you only ever run it down to 50%, that it's going to see that as zero. Those days are kind of gone because battery technology's gotten better, but you just don't want to leave your device plugged in at all times. You know, like for example, laptops, we see the batteries failing a little more quickly when people leave them plugged in at all times and just leave them plugged in for like a week straight or something. So just kind of keep that, keep that battery exercising uh, is a good, a good practice. 
Also, software updates. Okay. Uh, who who gets a feeling of anxiety when they see that little number on their settings, right? Yeah. All right. Sure. We've all been there, right? So usually the anxiety I think is is probably stemming from. Uh, let me put on my my Freud hat here. Uh, I think it's usually from some sort of a, a past trauma, right? You you did an update and something went went awry, and you didn't have a way of recovering from it. Well, that's where, remember what we were talking about with the backups? If you guys have a backup, you always have a way of recovering. So if you have a backup in place and you do a software update and something does go wrong, you can always restore back to that previous, that previous state. You know, so as long as you guys have a backup strategy in place, the software updates really should not uh, strike fear into your heart. Also. Uh, these, these software updates, the irony of the situation is software updates are actually something that's one of the best ways you can keep your devices running well. So a lot of times if you are experiencing a bug or something that is a glitch, this is actually going to fix that issue. Apple developers may have already addressed it, but you're not going to get that fix until you install the update. So definitely try to you know, keep up with those things as they become available because they're good for you. It's like eating your vegetables. All right, what not to do? Let's just touch on that real quick, because uh, I want to um, just kind of uh, address some of the, eh, I would say a little bit of like uh, illegitimate programs that we've seen popping up. Again, not totally malware, but we've seen, you see this kind of category of applications that are a little bit scummy, you know, that kind of say like, oh, you, you know, you need to remove these files or whatever on your computer, but then when you look at what they're actually doing, they're not really giving you any tangible benefits. Uh, you know, it's not actually going to make your Mac perform better. You know, so when we're saying uh, cleaner applications, talking about things like MacKeeper, uh, you guys might have seen Clean My Mac. I don't know if these names are ringing any bells. You might have seen like pop-up ads for them or something. These programs, don't install them, okay? They're not gonna help you out, they're just going to, actually the irony of it again is that they'll probably make your Mac run worse because they run all the time in the background, so they're kind of taking up more memory and, and just kind of bringing down the system as a whole. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's just one thing I wanted to address and just, just put that out there because I don't want you guys to get anything on your computer that, that you, uh, really shouldn't, shouldn't happen there, is not going to give you an actual actual benefit. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, so we do have, as part of the uh, reward for um, joining us for the class today, uh, we actually have these coupons. If you guys want it, we have uh, $10 off for you off of our tune-up service, which is normally $59. Uh, we'll give you guys a $49 tune-up. And we do uh, kind of a, a nine-point service on your computer. We check a lot of different things. We run a full hardware scan to make sure everything's running smoothly and just kind of look at your things like your backup procedure and stuff like that. So if you guys want to uh, check in your computer for that, definitely grab one of these, these coupons and we'll, uh, we'll get it checked in. And then just so you know, it does expire a week from now. So try to bring it sooner rather than later, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, uh, it's a good question. I mean, generally a tune-up is, is not really necessary on a, like a regular basis. There's no like set schedule. But I usually just recommend that you do it uh, you know, if you see slowness happening. You know, if you're seeing your computer slowing down and it's not performing the way you want it to, then I would say that's, that's where you want to bring it in and see if you can you know, help it out or we can help it out. You know, and there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, you can add RAM sometimes. You know, if you're still running on a hard drive, you can put in a solid state drive. A lot of things you can do to kind of revitalize the Mac, and those are things we can advise you about if you bring in your computer. So, yeah, definitely. Thank awesome, you. guys. Thanks so much. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, yes. All right, everybody. There you go. There you go.